All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or uh, data modes. Uh, trying to reimagine amateur radio in the information age. Hey, today is a great example. We've got a new piece of hardware here to play with. <laughs> this is called actually called the DigiPi Hat. It's a pre-production sample here. Let's play with it this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, yeah, welcome back, thank you. I don't know, Metallica seems to resonate with you guys. You know, I'm not a big Metallica fan, so I had to, had to pick that one up. In fact, um, I think we've got well over 100 videos. I mean, <laughs> I had to learn at least 100 little uh, song intros. All right, let's talk about the new DigiPi hat. Um, it doesn't exist just yet, um, so uh, let's talk about a little more right so if you're new to the channel, uh, we use Raspberry Pis to implement data modes. We can take a Raspberry Pi and hook it up to a radio and then start transferring data back and forth. We can send text messages, make contacts. We can hook it up to HF rigs like the one we got over there and talk to people all over the world using nothing more than a computer a keyboard. Actually, we don't even need a computer keyboard. All we need is like a tablet or a Wi-Fi device to operate the DigiPi. So every digital mode for amateur radio is available to you if you have a Raspberry Pi and some sort of Wi-Fi device. So the trick is getting your Raspberry Pi hooked up to your radio, right? Because it's not like they have like a radio plug on your Raspberry Pi. So we have to improvise. Now, if you have a USB-based radio um, that has a USB cable for cat control and audio, all you need is this $15 Raspberry Pi and maybe this cool little $12 screen and a USB cable. That's it. So for the ICOM 705, 7300, the Yaesu 991, some Jegu models, um, that's all you need is this stuff. However, if you have an HT, a handy talkie, like this one, or like the venerable Beofang, the, the handheld that every... Every ham radio operator loves to hate because it's so cheap. It's like, last time I saw it was like eighteen dollars. So with a Raspberry Pi, a uh, fifteen, what is this? Maybe thirty dollars, and a Beofang for another eighteen. So let's say just for under fifty bucks, um, you are operating in digital mode. So the trick is to get your radio, your HT like this, that doesn't have a USB cable hooked up to your Raspberry Pi. Now we've had a variety of ways to do this uh, in the uh, in the past. Um, for example, uh, uh, Randy put together uh, n7ebb.org, this radio interface board, which is really cool. It does the push to talk circuit. So it closes, you know, does push to talk when you want to transmit. And it's got the LEDs for receive, transmit, and Bluetooth. It's got a TRRS connector and a little PS2 connector. Really cool way to plug your radio into your Raspberry Pi. This just plugs right into the top of the Pi. In fact, I've got one right here. And you can see this is a Raspberry Pi rack. You don't have to do all this stuff, but this is a battery, a Raspberry Pi, an audio board, and then a uh, radio interface board that we're looking at right now that Randy has. And then uh, this cool little monitor like here for, for 12 bucks. So this is like the traditional way to do it. So Randy... Really saving the day there to make it easy to hook up your radio to your Raspberry Pi so you can do all these cool data modes. However, Lee uh, over in the, the PRC said, hey, hold my beer. I've got something else for you guys, <laughs> or maybe in addition to. So he's got something called the, uh, it's actually called the DigiPi Hat. Um, he's worked on one of these in the past. It kind of went out of production, and then uh, we got together. He sent me this pre-production sample. Um, it actually integrates that little screen that's actually soldered on. Um, it's got some headers for a GPS connector if you want, you know, so you can get time on FT8 from the satellites. It's got even, it's got actually, he's got so much <laughs> spare time or space on this. He actually put a LoRa chip on this. And then there's another header here if you want to put some sort of sensors or something. And a couple of buttons, you know, so you can turn the Digipeter on and off. Um, and it's got a, a, a traditional a DIN 9 connector that you can hook up to your radio. So this is the DigiPi hat. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. This does not exist yet as of February 24, okay? This is a pre-production sample. This is something Lee sent me. Um, he's got a website out here called, I'm probably going to get this wrong, Elec it Sore Parts. Anyways, <laughs> this is it. It's electkitsoreparts.com. And this is where he's selling all kinds of cool stuff. And eventually he'll be making the DigiPi hat. 
Um, so this again is for people with dual band radios or uh, HTs like the uh, the Baofeng here. You need some sort of audio interface and some sort of circuit circuit that closes the push to talk switch, um, so we can transmit we want when we want to transmit. So. Uh, Lee, thank you for sending me the sample. I'm going to go through a quick process of assembling this thing, turning it on and see what happens. Um, so the very first thing we need is the DigiPi SD card image. You can get, this goes to patrons of the channel. In fact, the DigiPi SD card image implements every data mode there is and every data mode that we talk about on this channel. So if you want to use these data modes, texting back and forth over radio, making contacts worldwide with your nothing more than your phone and Raspberry Pi, um, patrons of the channel download this SD card and we take it, flash it to an SD card physical SD card, which we've got in this guy right here. And this is a Raspberry Pi 4, but you know, you could use any Raspberry Pi you want. So I'm, I'm going to show you the complicated procedure here for installing this. So it's literally just uh, squishing this onto that. And do make sure you get the pins lined up correctly. That's, uh, see if I got that on there. I don't know if I can zoom this out a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to see. You know? So we have to make a radio interface cable somehow. That's going to be a requirement here. Let me see if I can balance this. And the one way we can do that is with this little DIN 9 connector that uh, Lee throws in the box. Really easy, no soldering required. Um, you get the audio in, audio out, push to talk and ground. You, you just put those into the screw terminals and then uh, close this up. That's it. And then I had to fabricate a little cable that goes from here and it goes into a, a Baofeng radio. Again, that's an $8 radio, 5 watt radio. And you can buy this little unit. You can either you know cut up a <laughs> speaker mic, which I think is what I did here. And you'll make a better cable than this. This is just kind of a mess, you know, just for me to, to get these wires all put together. Um, and so I've got those four signals, and all we need to do is plug them into, let me turn this around, the side of this radio. Now the Baofeng is hooked up, let me turn it on here, to our Raspberry Pi 4 with the DigiPi hat with the DigiPi SD card image. And what I'm going to do is hook this up. This, this extra stuff is totally optional, so I'm just going to plug in the... Uh, the temperature sensor, and then I'm going to plug in the uh, the GPS. He's got headers for these. These are all GPIO based. Um, you don't have to get this stuff, but you know it just makes it fun if you want to have a like a weather station or GPS tracker. And then I'm going to apply power. All right, so power is going in. Uh, the Bayo Fang is on. I think we are ready. This thing is booting up. Uh, what else do we have? Um, now the while we're waiting for this thing to boot, um, there's a lot of other DigiPi formats. I mean, you can get something like this as well. This is an ILI uh, 9342 based display, um, a little more full size. This is actually in a Raspberry Pi 5, so the DigiPi will run on that. Uh, we talked about the DigiPi rack already, and the, 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 this is the one I really like if you've got a USB based radio, is this Raspberry Pi Zero. All right, so DigiPi is booting up here. We can see the boot screen there. And it's going to go into TNC mode by default. And I've got a radio over here just kind of listening. Uh, I'm going to be a tracker. So it's using that GPS for the location. And it's going to send a position beacon automatically. Along with being a TNC. So we could use APRS Droid or Yak and all that stuff with it right now if we want. And waiting for it. Waiting for it. All right. DigiPi TNC. Here's the birth cry coming up in five seconds. Come on. There it is. <laughs> we got a position report for KM6LYW, and we can also see that um, that's our tracker screen. Um, so we are zero miles from here, because <laughs> we're right here, and it's a DigiPi tracker. And it actually, you notice that says 70F right there? So we actually got, uh, we're able to configure Direwolf to read this, this temperature sensor. This is just for fun, just because we can, because Lee's like, hey, you know, again, Hold my beer. Let's see what we can do here. And of course, it gets the location from the GPS, and uh, you can see that the, the bell fang is doing the transmitting, doing the packets. We're getting repeats uh, from from local digipeters. So that is the Digipi hat, for lack of a better name. Um, this will probably be available in the next thirty days, and it is the beginning of February twenty four. Um, again, this is for dual bander radios. Um, if you have a USB-based radio, really all you need is uh, a Raspberry Pi, a USB cable, and this cool little screen. And it'll do all of this and a whole lot more. It's all uh, web-based, so all you need is a Wi-Fi device. So, you know, like if I go to DigiPi, 
Um, it's on my home network. I can get the whole management console for this, and you can see all the modes it does. So right now it's in TNC and iGate mode. Um, it's also I tweaked it a little bit so it would be a tracker and read that GPS. So in your in your position comment, you can actually run a command, and the command reads that temperature sensor and puts that puts that on there. And it also reads the uh, the GPS. Uh, it can be configured to do that. So it does all these other modes as well: JS8 call, WSJTX, slow scan television. It does all those modes, um, including all of the packet stuff. Has a bulletin board on it. So anyway. Is this device, this DigiPi hat, for lack of a better name right now, um, is really going to make it easy for everyone to hook up a dual band radio. Again, the, there's just screw terminals uh, for your cable, for your transmitter, your transceiver, and you're good to go. All right, so thank you, Lee, for sending me that sample, and thank you, patrons of the channel. Wow, I really appreciate it, you guys. Um, there's an insane number of patrons. Uh, again, patrons get access to the DigiPi software image, which we booted into this Raspberry Pi. Anything gets you access to that. Um, what we want to do is get more people on data mode. So the more people that are out there, uh, the more people we can talk to. Um, and again, we've, I think we've got to get kids on data modes too. Because when was the last time you saw a kid actually talking on a cell phone, right? They're not. They're all texting. And of course, the DigiPi lets you do all of this. Um, I can send uh, SMS messages with this. I can send messages to other radios, all using my uh, Wi-Fi device or phone. <laughs> this thing keeps going off. I set it to send a beacon every 30 seconds. I don't know, has it changed? Has the temperature changed? No, I think we're we're still 70 degrees. <laughs> so it's still going. Uh, patrons, thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's getting to the point where I, I, I don't know. There's so many of you I can't scroll. Um, there's no reason we shouldn't be using digital modes. If you look, there are over 1,000 people here. Uh, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW gets you access to the DigiPi. And, of course, go to digipi.org uh, to download the image. Um, it's here. And all the information you need. Um, we've got some schematics on how to build this uh, circuit if you want to build one yourself. Um, this is the one uh, Randy put together, which works great. In fact, it's a perfect implementation of this schematic. Um, and then we've also got, uh, potentially, in the near future, the DigiPi hat, which does audio. It does everything. It's just amazing. And, it, and it's really easy to put together. There's no soldering. I know that's a big hurdle for a lot of people. All right. Hey, thanks for watching today. Uh, my name is Craig, call sign at KM6LYW. I'm in cool California, and...